Hello, my name is Michael Hennessy. In this series of videos, Shea Phelan, Kieran Collins and I will visit farmers who are working with the Enable Conservation Tillage Project over the last five years. We will visit these farms throughout the year to see how they're getting on using their establishment system, but also to see how they're controlling grass weeds in these systems, of which some of the weeds are problematic on many of the farms. So I'm driving through Clonmel, County Tipperary on a pretty damp day to visit Donald McGrath, who is a farmer just on the outside of Clonmel who is uh, farming a mintail type system and Donald's had a number of issues with uh, sterile brome over the last number of years that he's been working through on the ECT project so uh, I'll just catch up with him here today and see how he's getting on with those. Roland McGrath, just outside Clan Mill, South Tipperary. Uh, we're farming tillage here for 40 years you could say. We have rainfall of approximately 1000 mil here and the land is pretty decent. So what prompted you to change from, from plough-based system to a mintill system? We were working six odd reversible followed by a three meter power harrow combination. And that, that was a pretty weatherproof system. You just, in bad weather, you tucked in behind the six odd plough and away you went. But we did notice we were damaging the soil structure. And that manifested itself in, you'd have corners and parts of fields that the plant count wasn't in it. The soil was slumping and, we, and that affected yields. So we, this mint till came along and we said we'd have a look at it. One of the selling points of it was to improve the soil structure, which it does. That's it worked out reasonably well. Yeah. Okay. So as you're going through the evolution over the last 20 years, you've been out a long time now, have you encountered many grass weed problems along the way? We have broom and more broom, sterile broom, and we've got grape brooms. And the broom seems to dodge around the chemicals a bit. You certainly need cultural control, certainly. And uh, we have a shallow disc to get them to germinate, get rid of them, keep your trouble on top of the ground. If all things were equal, all things were perfect in terms of weather, are you trying to uh, push out your drilling date a little bit further into the year rather than that bit earlier? Ideally, I'd like to be sowing the last 10 days of October. Some, sometimes you could go, you might start on the 25th of September. It's another gorgeous day in early June. Sun is shining, it's lovely and dry out, and I'm on the road heading down to Donald McGrath's farm just outside Clonmel in County Tipperary. Donald is battling quite significant grass weed issues on the farm with brome and Italian ryegrass being the most problematic weeds on the farm. So I'm going to catch up with Donald to see how he's coping with that and see how control measures are going this year. On each farm, the ECT project selected a field with a high weed burden to monitor management practice. The ECT project staff use a grid methodology to count weeds each year before harvest. The results reflected how successful or not the weed control measures worked. On the map, squares coloured blue or green have a low weed population and squares coloured orange or red have a high weed population. When I spoke to Donald that day, we went through each of the years for the validation area. In 2019, winter barley was sown for harvest. And in that map, we can see there was some very heavy populations of sterile brome throughout the field, especially towards the right-hand side. The wild oats were well controlled by Axial in that year. In 2020, it was decided to take a proportion of the field and plough it and min till either side of that area. From the results, we can see that sterile brome was very present in the min till area, but had reduced significantly in the ploughed area in the centre of the field. Axial controlled the wild oats extremely well in the field. This was followed again in 2021 with spring barley using a min-till system. 
the overall populations of brome are reduced even further and the rotational plough piece in the middle of the field has a lower population than that to the right hand side. And Donal commented on the results of that ploughing. Believe it or not, it turned out pretty well. And you can see it there in the, and we developed multiple stale seedbed techniques, which was helping. In 2022, Donald decided to plant winter wheat in the area. The plan was to use pre-emerge herbicides, but this was not completed due to the weather. Post-emerge herbicide of Pacifica was applied to the field. Poor brome control was achieved, however, where the ploughing was completed in previous years, lower populations were clearly evident. There was also lower populations in this area of wild oats due to ploughing up weed-free soil from underneath. The ryegrass population had clearly expanded quite significantly. This population is herbicide resistant to ALS herbicides. The herbicide used was Pacifica, which will only control sensitive ryegrasses and not the herbicide resistant ryegrasses. Therefore, a large residual population was left at the end of the year. Winter wheat was planted again for 2023 and a plan to apply a pre-emerge herbicide was missed again due to weather conditions. A post-emerge herbicide was used again. Pacifica was used in this case with very mixed results. There was quite high populations of wild oats, sterile brome, and also Italian ryegrass. Donald's reaction to the weed population in the field. So in, in poor conditions, if I was back again, I wouldn't have bothered sowing. But we, we got five or six weeks of rain after sowing, which is okay. unusual. In terms of the validation area um, that we've been looking at over the last number of years, what lessons have you learned coming from that? It did improve it, controlling sterile broom. I'd be staying away from winter barley okay. because we don't have the chemical control. Okay. But pre-emergence is a must as well and very rigid use of chemicals. There's no, no shortcuts. And in terms of then what you've learned from all of those, have you brought any of those lessons out to your broader farm in terms of modifying the practice that you were doing on those? I suppose the first thing is pre-emergence is a must, followed up by a That's rigid... Pretty, pretty herbicide now. Yes, sorry. Uh, the use of break crops, the mix of winter and spring crops and break crops, all of that combination of all the above and perhaps go back and reset the plough. So they're all very much cultural control methods is really things that you were kind of pointing to is that it's kind of big things that I yeah. know you mentioned chemical earlier and that has a has you, you need to, you have to have a role. What you're aiming to do is germinate the weeds in the ground and kill them. Okay. So by that you mean a stale seed bed is it? Yes stale seed bed every opportunity. Okay. Multiple yes. Okay. Okay. The problem that I see and anyone will tell you that you'll get if you get a very good flush, you get 80%, 90%. Right. But your 5% will catch you out. You were saying you have a difficulty in trying to trying to manage with those multiple stale seed beds because of your straw business, would that be fair? We, we, we do put a big effort into marketing straw here. So seed straw bed. has the potential to delay seed bed or stale seed bed. That lends itself to a, a later stale seed bed. If we chop the straw, we get in an, an earlier one. You have a mix of various different grass weeds here. In terms of the last four or five years, do you think you're going forward or stable or going backwards maybe a little bit? I'd say I'm going backwards in some fields because we were in, in loss and we were tied to catch crops. It hindered us in or stale seed bed usage. Okay. You know, I'd rather have stale seed bed, multiple stale seed bed and a crop of spring barley in there. But because of having to put in catch crops, we we're hindered on that one. Do you think that you're going to have to introduce the plow a bit or is that something that, well, it was nice to learn that, but I think I keep going the way I'm going. We have to learn to plow again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe lots of people do, but it's so, your system, you can see your system evolving a little bit over the next four or five years that 
some ploughing, but mostly min tilling. Is that kind of the way you see it? Yeah, I'd like to stay min tilling because of labour and time issues and everything. Yeah. But if we have to, we'll have to. If we could get a 20 to 30 percent of our land rejigged every year, wouldn't it be a good thing? Let's just say a neighbour of yours came in uh, tomorrow the next day and they said, look, I've been ploughing for the last 25 years and I'm thinking of going down your system because I like what you do in some of your fields. And <laughs> and uh, saying, look, what's your best three or four pieces of advice in terms of getting into a mintel type situation? Uh, start off clean if you can and keep it clean. From but sweet yes, well, yeah, grass weeds, that's all I'm talking about. That's all I'm thinking about all my life at the moment. <laughs> Use break crops and a mixture of winter and spring. Stay a seed bit. And uh, certainly from what our conversation was, don't discount the plough still as a, as a cultural control. Reluctantly, I'm coming to that. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's great, Don. Thanks very much. A huge thanks to all the farmers who shared their experiences along the last five years. If you want more information on all of the farmers, please go to the Chagas website, chagas.ie, and search for the ECT project.